Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to 3 News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney, and today is Monday, March 7th. Thank you for being here for the top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. This is the show where you choose the stories that we're talking about. These are the stories that matter most to you because these are the stories that you are clicking on, reading, and sharing from our website and our app. Let's start off with an update on what's happening in Ukraine with Russia. Now, Russia has announced another ceasefire for evacuations. This is while fighting continues in Ukraine. And some people do not have a lot of confidence in these ceasefire situations because the announcements and what has happened in reality have not actually matched up in the past. But they did announce this ceasefire to let people get out of major Ukrainian cities. But they're now being criticized because many of these evacuation routes lead to Russia and Belarus, which is Russia's ally. So that's getting criticism from Ukrainians and others. Ukrainian officials are accusing Russia of medieval, medieval tactics as they try to encircle the major cities in there. Russian President Vladimir Putin's efforts continue to bombard many of the cities in Ukraine with fighting in place and not a wider stop to hostilities. Now today, there was a third round of talks between officials between Russia and Ukraine, but hopes of breaking through not strong at the moment. Now, the country's foreign ministers, those of Ukraine and Russia, are scheduled to meet in Turkey on Thursday. That's according to Turkey's top diplomat. Now, let's bring the update back here to Northeast Ohio. There was a body that was found in the Cuyahoga Valley National Park, and it has been identified as a man who was wanted for missing a trial date after allegedly stabbing an officer. So the Summit County Medical Examiner's Office has identified that body as Michael Stout II, from Cleveland, a 31-year-old, and that body was found at Cuyahoga Valley National Park last Thursday. The cause of death is still unknown. Initial reports believed that hypothermia might have been part of the issue. U.S. Marshal Services confirmed to 3 News that he had been wanted since January after failing to show up at a scheduled trial where he faced charges of felonious assault on a peace officer carrying a concealed weapon, resisting arrest, and other weapons charges. This was the result of an incident in January of 2021 in a traffic stop where he's accused of stabbing Broadview Heights officer Ryan Tiber in the head and face. But now we know that he is the person whose body was found at Cuyahoga Valley National Park last Thursday. This is a developing story. As we get more information, we will be sure to bring that to you. Now let's talk about the latest numbers in from the Ohio Department of Health related to COVID-19. Today, we are seeing a lower number of people in the hospital, 777 to be exact. And out of those people, 146 of them are being treated in an ICU. And a lower case number today, 431 new official reported cases to the Ohio Department of Health. Again, need to point out that's not including at-home COVID-19 tests. And we have some exciting news around the newsroom this week. 3 News Senior Health Correspondent Monica Robbins will be back this week. She has been spotted around the newsroom today getting things together. And people have been anxiously awaiting her return after she had been recovering from another surgery to remove part of a brain tumor. Now, she's had several surgeries so far. She's very excited to get back. She says she's looking forward to getting back and dusting off her desk and handling all that mail that's been stacking up and getting to sort of some of those housekeeping things. And I'll tell you what, it is a great sign to see Monica Robbins back in the newsroom. She says she's looking forward to being productive because that's who she is, that's what she does. And later this week, you will see a full sit-down interview with Monica at 11 p.m. on What's Next. And that'll be here on 3 News. Now, the 2022 lineup has been revealed for the Cleveland International Film Festival. And a word at the beginning, they are dropping films that have been tied to Russia or funded by the Russian Federation in any way. So two films that were removed from the SIF 46 lineup are No Looking Back and Unclenching the Fifths. Now, with that in mind, the opening will be at its new home at Playhouse Square. That's March 30th through April 9th. And there will be many films. There'll be 146 feature films and 182 short films representing 73 countries during its 11 day run. We have the full program lineup on WKYC.com. Tickets go on sale this Friday for members of the Cleveland International Film Festival. And the general public can buy tickets a week from Friday, March 18th 
That'll be at 11 a.m. We've got the prices all spelled out for you on WKYC.com. And if you did enjoy the streaming that had been happening for the past two years, there will be a streaming event as well. It's called SIF 46 Streams, and that'll be from April 10th through the 17th after the in-person event closes out. Speaking of films and the entertainment industry and excitement, this week on the Three Things to Know podcast, I got to talk with Q104's Morgan Wright, who you probably know from the morning show, Monday through Friday, but also from TikTok as Morgan P. Talks. And we talk about how she got TikTok famous, doing what she loves, and the latest celebrity and entertainment news. I love how Morgan put this. She says she picks up the shovel and does the digging so that we don't have to, and she is in it. She knows all the details. We talk about the latest information about The Bachelor, Kanye West and Kim Kardashian, Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox, who were just here in Cleveland for NBA All-Star Weekend. We get into all of it and talk about, you know, her inspiration, how much time it takes, what she's doing in her free time, and her brand new podcast, by the way, Morgan's Pop Talk. So that's on this week's Three Things to Know podcast. It's on every podcast platform. You can find it on the WKYC YouTube page today and WKYC.com where it's all linked. And tomorrow, it'll be here on the WKYC3 Instagram page. Go ahead and check that out. You can go to WKYC.com slash three things to know for all of that. Now, if you were traveling around this weekend, you might have noticed the gas prices going up. You were not imagining this because imagining you were not imagining this because Gas Buddy, Buddy says prices in Cleveland have gone up almost 50 cents per gallon in the last week. The average is now at three dollars and 85 cents a gallon. This is from Gas Buddy's survey of 831 gas stations in Cleveland. So, for a little bit of context, there places prices in Cleveland are now. 58 and a half cents higher than a month ago and a dollar 10 higher per gallon than a year ago. The cheapest station in Cleveland was 3.47 a gallon yesterday and the most expensive was 4.49 a gallon yesterday. So that's quite a swing. That's a swing of a dollar and 2 cents. You know, long gone are the days of looking at the neighboring gas stations on the corner and going to the one that's a few cents cheaper. Quite the range there. The lowest price in the state of Ohio yesterday was $3.19 and the highest was four dollars and ninety excuse me four dollars and ninety nine cents so not quite five dollars but remember experts did predict we would be above five dollars now if you go a little bit more south in Akron the average is three eighty one per gallon and that's up more than forty eight cents from last week now if you want to know how we compare nationally the national average is now more than four dollars at four dollars and six cents per gallon. That's up more than sixty-one cents from a month ago and a dollar twenty-nine from a year ago nationally. So save your pennies if you have to drive places. Like if you have to drive to Lorraine, for example, because there's a brand new Chick-fil-A opening in Lorraine and people that live in the Lorraine era are very excited about this. It officially opens this Thursday, March 10th. And it's going to bring about 150 jobs to the area, which people are also very excited about. It'll be open 6.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Saturday. The drive through is open until 10. Remember, Chick-fil-A is notoriously not open on Sundays. And to celebrate this, they're surprising 100 local heroes from the Lorain County area with free Chick-fil-A for a year. And they will honor the new restaurant opening with a $25,000 donation to Feeding America, which will distribute fund to partners in the greater Lorain area to help fight hunger. And this is very cool. Chick Chick-fil-A Lorraine is also going to be part of the shared table program. So surplus food will go to local soup kitchens, shelters, and nonprofits. Not throwing any of that good stuff away that so many people need right now. That's it for your three news now update today for Monday, March 7th. I hope you all have a wonderful start to your week, and I will see you back here tomorrow with more three news now.